In this video, I will show you the results of several experimental papers who studied the behavior of people when it comes to contributing to a public good. The first experiment I'm going to show you, so all three experiments uh, are run by uh, or were run by Simon Gechter from the University of Nottingham. There is obviously a lot more people doing these type of experiments, but I find that the experiments that he has run um, the most suitable for uh, what we are studying in this course. So the first paper was one that only came out very recently in, in Nature Communication, so one of the top science journals. And what they were studying is in a one-shot game, so where people can only once contribute to a public good, how are people actually going to decide? So how much are they going to contribute? So they, they took people in, in a lab and uh, they gave them an initial amount of money. So these are those Z tokens that you can see here. Um, and then those people could decide what to do with that money. Now, the interesting thing with all those lab experiments is the way they are done typically is you get an amount of money in, in, in certain monetary union, units, so tokens of some sort. And after the experiment is over, uh, these tokens are converted into real money. But the way it usually works is that, you know, you get a basic sum that, that you get just for participating. But then if you play this game well, you can get a lot more and than if you don't play this game so well. Uh, so you have an actual incentive to, to do certain actions when you are in the lab. Right? Um, and so the way they designed this experiment here was that every person has a so-called payoff function. Now people don't see this function in the lab, um, but they basically just see uh, what is their, you know, for hypothetical scenarios, what would be their final outcome? So what does this payoff function tell us? It tells you the following. So they can spend those tokens on a private good, sorry, uh, in a, uh, it, so they can then keep them for themselves, so spend it on a private good. That's the first term here, Z minus C, and C is their contribution to the public. And then their final payoff is however much they kept for themselves plus uh, the uh, contributions of everyone else scaled by a parameter. And that parameter tells us, um, you know, how, how much the contributions of others affect my own payoff. Now, the bigger that parameter is, um, the greater is my incentive to free ride. Um, because I would get a lot from the public good, um, no matter whether I, I, I contribute to it or not. And it's also the experiment has been designed in such a way that if everyone contributes a certain amount, um, that this is actually socially up. So, so, so they modeled in the lab basically this discrepancy between what is socially optimal and what is individually optimal. So, in essence, what they did was they actually designed it in such a way that for individually it's optimal to, to contribute nothing, to contribute zero and just keep those 20 tokens for themselves. That would be individually optimal. Um, and so, so participants really had every incentive to free ride. And then, then they just look at, well, what happens actually? Now there's more in the paper than, uh, than what you can, uh, you know, what you can see here, but I found this quite telling. So in a one-shot game where people play this game, anonymous other lab participants, once, what you see here is that the modal contribution is zero. And so so you, you see this big bar there on, on the left is zero. Right? So, so most people, around 40%, contribute nothing, but it turns out that there are a lot of people who contribute a lot more than that. And they contribute so much that the average earnings of people are actually 23.8. Now remember, everyone gets 20 at the start, so they actually get more because, on average, because that public good 
is, you know, that there are significant contributions here to the public good. So there are some people who are who te seem to be extremely altruistic and and spend all their twenty on the public good, and then there are a good few people who who are somewhere in between. And you also see something that that is often very characteristic. Uh, people it, tend to give, you know, multiples of ten or five. So you know, you see a spike here at five and some imagination also one at ten. You know, okay, I split it half half. So the bottom line of this experiment, and the, the, these type of experiments have been repeated in many places and, and so on, and, and, but this is what typically comes out is lots of people don't contribute anything, but there are some people who actually contribute a lot. So can we say that people are completely selfish? No. Are they completely altruistic? Probably neither. Right? So there is a distribution among people. And how that distribution looks depends on how these people are socially related, um, generally what that society, you know, how much trust is in that society, um, how that society values altruism. And that may, di may differ a lot uh, between and even within countries. Now, th this uh, finding is related to a previous finding by, uh, by Ernst Fehr and, and, and Simon Gechter, two very well-known uh, behavioral economists. Um, who in this game um, play the same type of public goods contribution game or public goods game repeatedly in the same group. Right? So, so they, they said, okay, how much are you going to, here are your 20 tokens, how much are you going to contribute? Then they give everyone their payoff and they, people also learn how much on average the other people have contributed. And then in the next round, they play the same game again and again and again, 10 times. Um, that there, there may have been some modifications, and for that you have to read the paper, and I give you the, uh, the, the reference here. Um, but, but that the main result you can see here in this graph, which is that the contribution over time declines. So we get from a situation where initially, people are actually more altruistic than at later stages when most people free ride. So what does this, does this tell us that people are genuinely and generally at all instances uh, selfish once they interact more uh, repeatedly? I would say no, that's not what it tells us, but it tells us that these types of dynamics can exist. Right? So you can imagine two types of dynamics. One would be like you have it in a very closely knit society, like in a you know in a parish, in a sports club, in a neighborhood where people know each other really well, and where uh, over time you know contributing almost becomes a virtue, and so there's more and more people contributing, and and those who didn't you know if they learn that the others contribute, they will do so too also because they fear social stigma. But there could also be this race to the bottom, and that's basically what you can see here, which is that there aren't so many people contributing to begin with, and then uh, those who do contribute, they learn that, well, the others are not contributing, so why should I? And so, so then gradually they actually, uh, they actually contribute less and less, and you have a bigger free rider problem arising. So you can basically see these two equilibria arising as polar opposites, one where Contributing is the virtue, which is not what you see here, but, but what you can imagine, um, where everyone contributes at some point, or almost everyone, and, uh, and, and the game that you see here, and that the equilibrium that you see here, that, that converges to no one contributes. And, and again, is this reflective of all societies? Probably not, but it's, a, it's useful to know that, that these type of dynamics can actually uh, can actually exist, and, and I guess we can all think of situations where we can actually see them. And uh, what the same group of researchers or researchers related to that group have done at a later stage is they have run that same experiment in different parts of the world. So you can see here uh, it has been done in, uh, in parts of Europe, uh, also parts of Asia and the Middle East. 
um, and Australia. Hasn't been done in, uh, in uh, Africa and South America for reasons that are unknown to, to, to me. Okay? But what they did basically was they rented a lab in each of those places. So labs are, you can find at pretty much any university these days. Um, and then in each lab, they played the same experiment. And some interesting results come out. So first of all, those numbers that you can see here on the right, these are the initial, con sorry, these are the average contributions across those, those 10 rounds. And so obviously there are strong differences here whereby uh, Copenhagen or you know, the, 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 the Danish lab participants have contributed on average a lot more than, uh, than the, the participants in Istanbul and Melbourne, for example. I don't want to get into speculations of why this is the case, but, but it is quite telling that there is such a big difference in contributions in such a public good. But what's also striking here is that no matter where you look, there is a downward sloping curve that over time you see the same dynamic. So if you are in a situation where a few people contribute and many people don't, it turns out that those who, who contributed initially think twice about contributing again because they say, okay, if, if the others don't contribute, I don't contribute. And so you have less and less contribution. And, and that's what you can see more or less across across countries. So in a nutshell, these, these are three examples of, of lab experiments that show us that neither are people completely selfish, nor are they completely altruistic. They're somewhere in between, and it depends on the type of society. But you can see that there, there are dynamics over time, which means it depends very much of the, the, the contribution behavior depends very much on whether they contribute once or they repeatedly contribute and learn what others have done. Um, and, and, and that may influence also how much they contribute to the public good. 